In this video, we're going to show you a little bit about the blur gallery features in CS6, as well as showing you a way to do it in the old school way in CS5. First thing we're going to do is we're going to bring up uh, the folder for our blur gallery assets, and I'm going to start with the field blur image. And uh, when we open it up in Photoshop, here's this picture of this old rusted truck, and uh, it's not mine. I found it somewhere else. Anyway, the first thing you got to realize is that the new blur features in CS6 require you to work on its own um, layer and that they are not um, capable of being smart filters. So what we want to do is duplicate our regular background layer so we have a copy. And we're going to rename this blur. Alright, so the first type of blur that we're going to play with is under the filter, blur, and it's called field blur. Now field blur brings up a new little window and it's what this is is called the blur gallery layout. Like it's like a whole new workspace. Okay. All of your blurs are available to you at the right, but we're gonna stick to just the field blur this time. Basically wherever we have a pin, we can dial up or down the blur in that area. So if I move it over here to the side and drop it down to nothing, there's no blur. Oops, there we go. To try and hit it on zero. I could also type it over here on the right. Then, uh, if I were to, for example, add a blur, I'd click and it would add a blur to that area. Maybe add a blur over here, maybe over here and you can dial it up or down to make it blur more or less. You can also tell it to save the mask so that you can actually see the mask that created this blur. All right. Um, now basically what's going to happen is once you're done with this you've made a permanent change. So I want to have it be not blurry here, blurry all the way around. All right and then I just click OK to complete it and it's going to blur that whole layer. Now I told it to save the mask uh, so let's go over to channels and you can see what the blur mask looked like. This is what the blur mask looked like. Now the old school way of doing this type of thing I'm going to duplicate my layer and I'm going to call it old blur and I'm going to have the top blur empty here so I don't have it on and I'm going to show you how to do something like that. Now, we would create a new channel and we'd paint whatever we want. If I were to create a new channel now, this one's called Alpha 1, I'm going to do some gradients on top of it. Let's do a, well, let's see, we'll go the opposite, turn that on reverse. So I have a gradient here and whatever I happen to do with my um, Alpha 1 layer here, I can paint some extra black in it, you know, whatever I want to do. Um, I could do whatever. And basically the white is going to end up being blurrier and the black is going to be en ending up normal. Okay, so now basically what you do is you'd return back to your layer and make sure your channel is back on RGB. And if I were to do a filter blur lens blur, which is in the middle, if I tell it to do alpha 1, see it's going to create that blur. If I tell it to do the blur mask, it's actually going to do the same one as the blur gallery. So while the blur gallery is pretty neat, it's actually the same as kind of going through the lens blur if you understand the way the masks and the channel masks work to create it. So anyway, play with that blur and see what you can do. And then we're going to jump on over to another one. We're going to open up the uh, Richardson Street Garage here. And um, we're going to do a tilt shift on it. So when I double click this, it's going to want to open up in RAW first because it's a RAW image. I'll just tell it to go ahead and open up. And in this one, we're going to do a filter and blur. And we're going to do a tilt shift. Now the tilt shift basically is like a, a gradient mass that comes up. So basically I can move this pin here to the middle where this red car is and I can click my mouse near the 
little dial here and I can rotate and a little too much let's see you can also pull it out further this represents um, white to full blur or whatever like non blur to full blur I can make that happen slower I can ha make it happen quicker over here pull this in some I'm trying not to rotate too much here just trying to rotate on the little length of the road there anyway and uh, when you when you uh, do this you can end up creating a what's called a tilt shift it kinda makes everything look like tiny town if you will And we're gonna save the mask to channels and click OK as well I'm gonna take a look at what those look like over here so I'm gonna click on the channels and you can see that's my blur mask there right so you can use lens blur and create a radi uh, a linear gradient right and it'll do that let's try um, one more here um, okay this one here is the Orthodox Cathedral we're gonna pull that one up and it's also a raw image so we're gonna let that open up and this one here we're gonna do the last type which is filter blur and iris blur and what it is is it, it's kinda doing it on the focus here so it's kind of like a circle version of the of the blur so you can see how you can take it in make it more rectangular widen it take these out make it focus in and you see how you can blur and then you see how you can make it really blur along a circular path or an elliptical path and then we'll save the master channels on that so you can see what that one looks like I do want to also make sure you realize that I'm you know didn't duplicate my layer on these so remember if you did not duplicate your layer that uh, you definitely would have to uh, make your your picture get saved as a different file but you can see the blur mask here how it looks so basically the neat thing about the blur gallery is basically it does a lens blur and it creates that mask for you and then blurs your image in a lens blur. Pretty neat uh, effect.